was an order March 4th, 5 o'clock. Uh, Yes, sir. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we just uh, we thank you for uh, today. We thank you for um, your blessings. And uh, God, I thank you for all of um, the volunteers and first responders who have been out searching for uh, Sebastian, Father, and, and that you have um, encouraged them and been with them. And I just pray that you continue to encourage them as they're uh, continuing efforts and, and shifting uh, operations, Lord. And, Pray uh, grace for the family and uh, for this missing boy, and that your grace will be upon them, God, and that you would just shine your light and, and, and bring revelation to where, where he is, Lord. And I pray for uh, uh, Commissioner Schoff and passing his father and, and Commissioner Hyde and, uh, and his uh, uh, passing his son, Father, that you would still be with them and, and uh, uh, protect their hearts and spirits and, um, and their families. And we just bless this meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Do you want to go ahead and explain why you're Yeah. Um, Chairman Hyde contacted me and wanted me to just let you guys know that he's just taken a break this month to uh, focus on family members and get stuff done. And he's asked me to sit in, in his stead for this month. So just stay and keep his family in, in, in your prayers. He, he asked that. So Before we get to approval of the agenda, I've got two. Well, I guess one would be an addition and one's a handout. So under new business 13, uh, B, we would like to add this the Bearcat uh, contract. Um, I believe everyone should have gotten the email today. Well, I, I've seen her. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can we move that up a little bit? Because I'm sure uh, Mr. Widener would like to get back to. Uh, he was here. He, uh, oh, there you are. I'm sure he'd like to get back out to the. Yeah, we can we so, go out of order. I speak to one, 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 put it there to get it. Uh, so much. All right, got a motion. Do we have a second? Just to put it on the, on the agenda. Second. second by gentleman or the right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. So we'll have that added. And then this is a handout from uh, 13B. We can, we'll move it up. Where's this? Um, this is the grant called? Bearcat. Well, actually, the title of the grant is Homeland Security Grant uh, for fiscal year 2023. That's the service caption. And they want to use it for the best. Yeah, that's the intent of it.
two things. We want a contract system that would guarantee us uh, payment for us for long years. Uh, for multiple years. Uh, that serves two purposes, really. Uh, the first one is to relieve all liability from the county. Uh, signing a contract would just be like getting a printer service here in your uh, uh, county building. Uh, you sign up with us, it replaces all liability from you, so we will get a payment of whatever dollars that we would associate with. Uh, and uh, again, remove y'all from liability. You'll stay in there and y'all have nothing to do with it, you're just doing a donation. Second thing it would do is allow uh, our volunteer departments to get a uh, 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 finance for finance for fire trucks, apparatuses, whatever they may need, buildings. Because right now, uh, I know Tab here can tell you for Highland, trying to apply for a uh, financing through a bank right now, unless you have funding that's guaranteed for at least a couple of years, uh, they won't even look at you. They don't. They don't equate donations to be uh, from the citizens to be any kind of funding that's guaranteed. Uh, and as well as your payment, because any year you can just cut us without mentioning it wouldn't matter. And so they won't finance us to buy any apparatuses, and some of the county fire trucks are getting extremely old. Uh, I know most of us are running uh, trucks anywhere from 20 to 30 to 35 years old, and they are way out of date. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing is the funding formula. Uh, we're just trying to make it a little bit fairer. Um, I have all kinds of handouts for you to show you how, many, how much population some of us are carrying, how many square miles some of us are covering. Right now, we're getting 24,000 per station flat, no matter what size you're carrying. And uh, it's a little unfair. You got some that are getting 24,000 that are covering twice as, uh, twice as much property and value as other properties. Uh, so, again, I have a lot of information I can give. I have handouts. I've got a poster here. If you'll allow me to speak later, uh, that would lay a lot more of this out, and I can get a little more time to speak to you, but I don't think I'm all the time. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Well, we have time to see you now. Yeah, I mean, if it's, once we get through public comments, if it's, mm -hmm. it's a topic on the, on the agenda. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Tab Matthews. Sorry, Sister Chief Matthews. Sure. Uh, Tab Matthews, uh, 110 Blue Street, Oakland. Uh, I'm the Sister Chief of the Power Policy of Fire. Um, you know, I know funding is, is a touchy subject. And uh, but volunteer fire departments would rely on county funds to operate. Um, I know my department was a little bit of an oddball with the three stations, so our funding's a little higher. But we try to be good shepherds with our funding. Um, but I like to tell my guys, you know, we have money that will one repair for the waste and transfer. And that's what we are. With our funding and the way our donations work, the way the funding comes in, if one of our trucks goes down, they're not even fixed, they're not even fixed. And $20,000 pair wheel that's a pretty huge impact on the board. So, you know, I, I, I believe education is key. As Brad mentioned, you know, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Um, I know we have a lot of work to do, a lot of work to go. Uh, when I first started in this business 20 years ago, I think we only got about $5,000 from the county. So we've really improved since then. But in order to adequately operate and serve the constituents that we cover, uh, We've got some work to do, we've got a long way to go. Um, we like to give back to our volunteers. We have a roster of 25 volunteers, and we run calls, we do trainings, we, we help the EMA do the searches and all that, and we really can't give back to them the way we feel like we should. We take the time away from the families and all. So I, I encourage you all to contact us. Each individual fire department has own needs, its own needs. Our needs at Highlands are different from White Houses, which are different from Up Grove. It's kind of unique, so we'd be more than happy to answer any questions, explain what our goals are, explain what our needs are. Uh, so uh, I just want to thank you all for taking the time to, to look at helping us out more. And uh, we look forward to working with you guys and the budget committee and other commissioners as time moves on. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and thank you for adding the EMS uh, study to the agenda and putting that information in there. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all you people, especially the volunteers that went out and, and hunted for that young boy. And, um, Chad, we haven't found him yet, and hopefully we will. Um, I appreciate you all. You know, I hear some of the, the previous comments, and I think about over the last eight years what I've heard. There was a study supposedly done a couple of years back to look at um, fire departments and what we were going to pay for the volunteers.
peers over the last two years, and I think um, the, the chairman at the time kind of let that die. Um, and I think we need to bring that back up and, and, and really put in a serious effort, do some benchmarking, best best practices across the country, if that's what it takes. Uh, but these people need to be recognized for what they do. Um, but the other thing that I'd like to talk about is the EMS study. Um, again, I think it was 2016, there was a member on this committee that here sat here and heard it talk about a EMS salary study. I bet the commissioner remembers that. And he, I bet you could probably recant the, 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 the discovery that we found that basically our worker fees were underpaid and our top brass was overpaid. We paid an outside third party to come in and do that. Two years later, nothing had been resolved, went through the same exercise, and guess what the conclusion was? The same problem. So I sympathize, and, and I do. We're trying to hire people to come into a very stressful position. Writing Sitting behind a desk is a lot less stressful than, than going out there riding on a rig, going to a craft scene. I've done it for 30 years. When I was a volunteer up in Connecticut, I did it. The worker bees need to be appreciated. We can't just look at, though, paying them more without looking at the cost of the entire thing, including we have now a private um, ambulance service operating in, in, in Sumner County. What percentage of the gravy calls are they taking that we could be getting to use that to augment our finances to pay our worker bees? And I, I say that with all utmost respect. The people that actually do the heavy lifting need to be recognized and they need to be paid appropriately. But we need to look at the whole system because if, if we've got a private ambulance service operating here, somebody needs to include that in the equation. There's money going away that we're, it's probably going through our fingers that we could be gathering and using some of that to pay. And so we rotate people on the less stressful, more stressful kind of operation. But anyhow, so thank you. I appreciate you taking this up and uh, look forward to hearing about it. He's got it down those times. He knows that one. So if there's no objection from the committee, we'll move uh, the new addition of 13B up. And we'll hear from Director Widener. Uh, if there's no objection to that, then we'll go ahead and go with the report from the chairs and everyone else. Director Widener. You can do the report in the, in the very chat. Uh, I'll talk to Alton on four. Uh, so we, today, after eight days of searching, um, we made the decision to, we, we have not stopped to scale the way back because we have literally pounded um, a five mile area. Uh, so we've been underground uh, with uh, cameras <coughs> in all corners. We've been in cages. We got horses, helicopters, um, fixed wing planes, searchers from across the state, divers. We've uh, pumped ponds. We have uh, done everything we know to do, and we, we've actually uh, done some case study on other um, cases like this with 14-year-old um, individuals that, that walked away, and, um, and we're using that as uh, for some of the decisions we make and the characteristics of, of, uh, um, of what they do. And so we've, we've done it. We've been through a lot. Um, and all the strength increase in the watershed come from Tyree down. And, uh, you know, uh, we've had contact with families every day and, and you know, gotten information from them regardless of what Sebastian might do. And uh, um, uh, if he's there, um, we'll be listening, but I don't, uh, we'll, 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 it'll take us a while to extrapolate all the information from the, the search tool that we use, which tracks all of our, our searchers. Um, we actually crashed the system three days ago, and they called me out of California and, and told us that they were going to do some things. and told my operations chief what to what to do to, to make some changes. Um, but the first two days, we we did 2,000 miles of searching on foot to search the these guys. The guys from across the state, the girls from across the state, K9. Uh, we're going to take K9 on, on both uh, um, census 
specific live track on Cadaver. We, we, we've done all of it. So today, um, Chief Craig and I made a decision at the top of, we stopped this team, I thought my team, to scale back. So we've got a command post that's still at Shackle Island Fire. And let me tell you all this, we destroyed their, their lot, their, their driveway. Um, we're going to fix it. We got, I've got some money in, in seed and fertilizer. We're going to fix it. We're going to seed it. I talked to Toby Ellis today, and we're going to pay the gravel to, to uh, I think he's going to take the grader in and, and get the, the drive fixed back um, like it was before we got there. Um, we've been going every day cleaning up the station and man folks, and it's just, just a mess again. Uh, we'll have a total number on people, but we um, one day we had, our largest day was 330 servers. And, um, and I'm, I'm, that number's going to be over, well over 1,000 people, probably over 1,000. Uh, we'll put together miles, man hours, and, and a lot of other stuff. But the map, we actually have a map of our search area that, that, that goes um, by day. So day one through day eight, and you can see the work that was done each day, and then we'll do a composite of everything. And uh, um, quite honestly, we, and we talked to a lot of other professionals, and, and, uh, and they're like, guys, you know, you know what we're going to do. So we, we made the decision day of, Scale down, we're not going to stop, and uh, um, the investigation continues, and that's where we're at. I'm going to ask anybody any questions. Josh, well done, you all on your team. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Command Post. It's pretty impressive. All right, so with no objections, we'll go ahead and go into uh, the contract here. My understanding this is the, this, uh, this is the approval. Um, which we did several months ago. Um, and this is the contract. We was awarded the contract. We was awarded the grant. Um, so, uh, I speak up. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm going to talk about the way this came about. Last week, when, it all, when this all came down, we, we, we quite honestly, we, uh, from Monday through Friday, we got about six hours sleep in that period of time. And when, when my contact was stated, said it, it's here, we need to act on it quickly to get back. And I made a I made a call to a friend of mine at FEMA and I asked if they could try to get this um, pushed through a little bit because we'd like to like to try to get it through the division uh, in this in this uh, fiscal year uh, because the bill time on this piece of equipment for the year. And this was actually produced quicker than I thought it was. So I was thinking it would I didn't think I would be requesting tonight and then when we got this and we got the County Attorney's approval tonight. And I called Mr. Chairman and I asked if we could put it on. I apologize for that, but that's the way it has happened, and it's been um, quite a trying week and a day. So I apologize for that. Thank you. So the part of that was from from legal to state of the standard state contract. These, um, and that it was good to go with it to go forward. So here we are. So we have a motion and a second. We'll go ahead and start. With motion. Second with Commissioner Harris. Second with Commissioner Wright. Questions, comments, concerns? I haven't had time to finish reading. Sure. So I, 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 I can see it. I need more time to do it. So I can't. I mean, I agree with Terry. I, I remember when he came and we talked about it and we agreed on it and all that. But he wasn't sure he could get it. And this came in today. And I, I understand what he's been. He's been busy. And but I think if it's going to take a year to build it, uh, maybe we could bring it back next month where we have a lot of time to read over it. And then we can get him squared away in April. Good. I would respect, I think, you're missing this point. Um, he wasn't given the full fiscal year in, so that it could be built for the next year. February one. Uh, March eighth, okay. Oh, I was mm -hmm. getting that. Yeah. yeah. So. So it's different fiscal year. I'm I'm torn between this. Uh, I was thinking it might cost me. Um, but. I understand and agree that we, we did a lot of work to try to get these grants to not come at us at the last second in other committees over, over this last year or eight, six months. 
give us the equipment to do it with. And I know most of y'all will support this, or I hope you do. You just want to look over the contract, and I understand that. But I responded as a negotiator last month to Cummins Lane. Again, you were there with that one. And he had racked rounds all day. We could have used the Bearcat man, couldn't we? When you're standing out there in the wide open, folks, and people racking rounds off, unless you've been there and done that, and some of you have. You don't know what it's like. And all they're asking, it's the same thing that we have already voted on and agreed upon. All they're asking is just give us the equipment to do our jobs. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, so... I mean, I, I think that it's, it, here's where I'm at. I think we just, uh, this committee can go ahead and send it forward. We're going to have budget to talk about it, review it, and then we've got full commission to talk about it and review it. And that doesn't hold up forward progress, if you will, for planning support or strategy. It just keeps everything moving forward. So I think for time's sake, and if we're trying to be transparent and moving forward, and less bureaucratic form of government, Here's a chance. We've already passed the resolution. We've already sent it to the Department of Homeland Security. It's already there and it's in place. Commissioner Johnson. Um, can I ask um, Mr. Silva a question? Sure. Um, do you see anything in the form of strings that would be stop signs for places of hesitations of things that you heard in our? Um, Discussing back several months ago when we first talked about this, that, that we should be aware of that we weren't aware of. And uh, I understand what you said, same contract name as, as before, but you've got longer to familiarize yourself with the previous one and possibly this one. Do you see anything that would be um, strange attacks from, from the federal point of view for state? No, this. This is a state grant contract I see all the time. As a matter of fact, uh, there's very little I could do to change it. Their, their response would simply be, you don't get the money. So, uh, plus there are provisions in Maryland's anyway, so there's usually not any uh, pushback I've got to give them. So I view this more as a, as a grant uh, oriented document. I, I don't really focus on what it's going to be used for. I leave that up to the commission. I feel like that's out of my purview. But for the contract, the terms of the contract, they're satisfactory. So the discussions we had um, back when this was first talked about getting the contract, people were making amendments to as to what they would like to see the vehicle used for and things like that. Is that all going to be passed out again now that we have this? That's that's a commission item that. With me, it's the money issue that comes through the contract. That's all this is, is they're going to give us the funds. How you all choose to use it becomes a debate of its own. It's not a legal question at that time. Okay. Uh, unless you force it into one. But. I mean, I'm okay. Assuming I'm just, I mean, we're going to have another week to look at it for, for the budget, and then another week after that to set up for the commission. I know that you all can be talking about it. Are we voting on call the question or the call the question? Oh, uh, call the question again. Yeah.
I can pass it around. Um, yeah. Well, this is. I, I just wanted to tell you what it was, or I wanted to share with the community. Do you have time? I don't. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and we have to take that with with us and uh, get that back. So maybe we can, yeah, maybe we can. It's just, I can tell you what you're, for 2023, mm -hmm. your total revenue was basically $9.2 and your expenses were $12.2 mm -hmm. So you're, we're, we ran a deficit of $4.6 for 2023. Okay. Nine, nine yeah, so in 2023, our revenue that we reported on the financials were $9.2 and our expenditures were $12.2 million. So that was a difference of $4.6 million. And I, I wanted to talk to Mr. Lawyer and get some more information. I was hoping maybe y'all had some. I think that that is, um, he has on here that that, that your health, and, your health benefits were charged back to the department. So I don't know if that that's included in this or separate. I'm not so that's, sure. that's about, mm -hmm. we're looking at about a 67% coverage of the EMS. Your revenue. Does that sound right? So the math I just said is about $3 million between. Yeah, so what's he got here? Oh, it's the ARPA. Oh, I'm sorry. And this, in addition to that, was the ARPA payment. Okay. So he pulls them over here. I'm so, sorry. So you, you ended up with about $4.6 million. Right. right. Does that sound about. Um, so we operate 13 24 hour AOS ambulances 24 7, 365, and 5 or 6 AOS ambulances. Okay. So, anyways, I am looking at. You told me to go get them from him, so I'm starting to work on that. So, I, and I, I'm sure he can share, and and y'all can have them too, and we can all discuss them. Can we get that added to the monthly report? Now that this is what this is, and, and I can pass it around. He, what it, what it shows is from 2010 all the way to 2023, and and it's an analysis. I'm sorry, Dad. I'll be more happy if you can take it with us. Yeah, on this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's my only copy. Um, yeah. I can, yeah, let me do that. I'm sorry. And I I thought that. Oh, well, thank you, ma'am. I'm just curious. Is this the only department we're going to do income and expense statements every month? Well, we get I mean, presented we revenue. Do that general law for planning and zoning and building and codes. And, I mean, I'll be happy to bring one from my office, too. I've asked, this is the sixth month I've asked about expenditures. It just, it just seems, uh, seems unnecessary. So this is a business that we run. We run an ambulatory business. We've yeah, talked we about revenue. Business. No, we have revenue and we have expenditures, we have accounts receivable, and we talk about accounts receivable, and we talk about their business. But that, I'm sorry, i just trying to understand expenses. All right. Thank you. Report to the ECC. Okay, what it just said, I'm going to back up here. Uh, calls for service in February, law enforcement 13,478, fire 1,983, EMS 2,067, 911 calls 3,932, and then administrative calls 13,049 for, uh, for the month of February. Thank you. Can I ask a question for you? You had uh, talked about a new person over there for the
got motion by Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Harris, you want to do a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. So we'll have it for discussion. Uh, the committee wants to spend the rules to hear uh, Brad. Sorry for what happened. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.
where you have Highland has three stations, three, the same, I mean, excuse me, a little bit less in value, a lot more in square mileage, it's just a large discrepancy. And so we're just trying to even the playing field. And on that formula, if you notice, one of the last lines, look at total, I know this voice was numbered lady, and she's just looking over that, that's destroying it. That's okay, I'm here for it. Uh, the last number is like 700,000 and some change. That number can be whatever we need it to be. That is just how the formula worked out for a way it was done in 2018. This formula is actually out of date. So if you gave us a number, whether it's the same 450000 we're getting now, or whether it's a million dollars, we can plug it into this formula and give you out the money appropriately. So just because we change the funding structure does not necessarily mean you have to increase the funding, although that will be something that we do approach in budget as well. Uh, but I hope with all this you can really see the need for it. It may not be exactly perfect. I know there's a lot of questions which you're happy to answer. Uh, but there is definitely a need for these two things. And before I get a pass I do have a bars map here. I didn't have time to throw together a PowerPoint. I know how much y'all love maps. Uh, oh, that's right, Curtis. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I can hang it up by the wood. But just to give you an example, if you don't mind, Wes, right here. Oh, but this is our fire zones that we have here. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, you can see how our fire zones are all broke out. Just to give you a quick example, uh, up here in the top is a hundred five, a hundred six million dollars in property values right here. Is that Highland? Yes. Yeah, that Highland, and they cover 53 square miles. If you go down here to that five mile area I told you about, number one, fire department on the peninsula, 5.8 square miles, very tight. They protect $135 million for the property. So what that's telling you is, uh, I'll get that one. And what that's telling you is those structures they're protecting are larger, they are hotter, there's different equipment that they need to fight this. They may not need three stations, but the amount of stuff that they're protecting in the houses and how dense it's all packed, doesn't mean that their their needs are less. That's fine. And this is yours to have. I'm gonna make a prettier copy and you know PDF file and email it to you. That way it's not just we got this about 30 minutes ago. So, uh, but all these numbers are also in that formula. It's just not as pretty as you know person's handwriting. Now, this is the these are just volunteers. I have a I actually have a copy. I just want to make a smaller copy. Someone on PDF or the way machine that easy. Uh, he might need it. Um, the other thing, along with those formulas, uh, oh, oh, geez, you asked about that. So we have one department that is a city as well as responds in the county area. Uh, West, well, I mentioned it, right? West Portland. West Portland. With that, how, in that formula, how that would figure is only the county numbers would factor into this formula. So none of their city stuff to plug in, they would not receive a dime for any of those inside the city limits. We only count outside of their city limits, that way you don't mix city and county stuff. So they've been figuring the same way. And I'm open for any questions you may have. I know when I talked to you, you talked about Gallatin. Gallatin has two... Gallatin's a um, community. Community? Yes. If they have their own They do. They do, and they, right now they're only being funded for one. They're the only one like that, and no one can really tell me why uh, that I found so far. But that again is another reason why we're trying to equalize this out, and make it a little more fair. Get some stuff for it. Not my job. I'm gonna address the chair first. He may be able to answer it. If he got, if he wants to go, to you, then I want to answer uh, that one. Um, my understanding is that when we approve funding for them, we do it with the um, uh, uh, appropriation we get to the, to the charitable contribution of them. And, and we do that to the organization of the volunteer fire department. They split it the way they want to split. Is that not correct? No. When we, I believe when we first took office, that was the whole fiasco, if you will, for lack of a better term, of a show that each agency was given, well, there's two pockets. Uh, you've got 24,000 per station is normally what we get, typically give, historically give. And then there's another pot, and 
Brad, you said, oh, my God, I think it's 139,000, 138,000. And that's the one where the, all the chiefs get together and they decide how they want that dispersed. Okay. And then finance. That's what I was thinking. That. That was, yeah, it's just that every small lot. No, I, I, I agree with that. I, I don't understand which way is the best way to figure the formula. Is it per person? Is it per value of the house? And um, for the population size and things like that. And I don't know where the fairness is, but I agree that that needs to be looked at because it's a blanket. Twenty-four thousand plus places does not seem right or fair. Which um, has do you have any idea what your ISO rating is? I know what almost everybody's ISO rating is. Could right. you explain ISO, please? Could you give us a good ISO? And then what's the slash? Uh, the slash is usually with your if you're within a thousand foot of a hydrant or within five miles of a fire station. So if you're a five star slash six seven or above, you're going to get a five star rating. If you're within a thousand foot of a fire hydrant, you are a class five. If you're outside of that, but you're still within your five miles, that would make you a seven. Five or seven, one. Yeah. Uh, that is just the rating that, that an insurance company uses. Absolutely, I'm sorry. ISO is the standard that an insurance company uses to determine what your insurance rates will be. Insurance, insurance, service, insurance services organization. Could you, there's two, it's got international ISO standards and that has nothing to do with this. This ISO, from this perspective, is insurance services organization. And there are private organizations that the insurance companies pay to do the valuations of the fire departments and provide this rate. And then the insurance companies use those ratings to determine your rate. Absolutely. And it's not necessarily the fire hydrant is a five mile that gets on a split. The fire hydrant does be in there. Sorry, right, let's bring it back into the table because this can go out. We got 47 conversations around me. This is all driving me up the wall. Commissioner Boyd. So, with the ISO, I, I have had a class on ISO and I found it very interesting. It is. Um, could, you could you remind me and bring to us, is it, which is which do we want, the smaller number or the bigger number? You want the smaller. Okay, so when we're at a nine for the ones that don't have a fire hydrant within 500 feet, do they get? But thousand, but or outside that five mile. Nine. Um, I find that concerning. Is that concerning to y'all? It is, but, but we don't uh, have as many of those anymore. That's one of the reasons we included them in the uh, formula, is because right now it's really hard to bring the ratings up with certain things. Uh, so, we, like if you have outdated trucks, personnel, equipment, training records, uh, time for training, computerized records, hydrant maintenance, hose maintenance, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into those ISO ratings that honestly a lot of the departments can't afford to even work on that to get those ratings down. So one of the reasons it's included is because if we are able to increase the funding for the volunteer fire departments uh, and bring that number, or excuse me, and the guys can do what they need to do to bring that rating down, what you're going to spend per person, per citizen inside Sumner County will actually be offset <coughs> tremendously by their ISO rating and their insurance premiums. So for the person, in the city, I mean in the county area, it's actually going to pay for itself rather quickly. And in one of those, uh, not to, uh, to distract from the formula, but in one of those handouts I gave you, it actually shows how much Summer County is spending per person in the county. Um, and right now we're spending six dollars per year per person for fire service. Um, if you look at the next closest person, uh, next closest county to us, um, I think it's eight, nineteen or twenty dollars per person in the county, uh, but that's all in there in one of those forms. Just again, more nighttime reading for you. Mr. Chair, do you have any idea what funding Robertson County is giving the volunteer service at this time? It's in there. Do you have any idea what Wilson County is doing with their volunteers? Uh, that's also, I think that one's in there. I may have deleted it. Do you have Wilson it. County in there also? Uh, no, I think I took that one out because it was large. WEMA is its own thing. FEMA has they also has EMS and fire all in together. Yeah, I used to, that's where I started out. Yeah, I think we're making money curtains. Yeah, 18 million. 18 million is what they spend on there, but that is EMS, fire, and EMA all together. So they are slightly different. That's what we took out of our records. So, 
with Wilson County. I found out recently it was very interesting. So they do not have a fire tax over there. What I was told by CTAS is Wilson County, they have put a special tax on sales in the county, and that goes to pay for their services. That's different from some of the other counties that you see. So I, wanted, I found that very interesting. I wanted to bring it to y'all for information. Well, it, it sounded, it was intriguing to me. You're talking about the fire tax? No, it's, a, it's a sales tax only in the county, is how it's been explained to me. And then they use those funds. And that way they don't double tax the municipal. And there lies the problem. All right. So, you may have any more questions? I'm sorry. I was going to say before I leave that formula was written by TPAS. That's where it came from. It's not from the homegrown. Uh, that's the formula right now is using Robinson County, just made to fit Sumner County, um, but it was written by them. And the only thing I would say is it doesn't tell me, if I'm judging these um, facilities just based on, one, on the value of the homes they're serving, I want them to serve a home that's worth a home. Yeah. Put out the fire of the $100,000 home. It's the same, you know, oh, okay. it's going to be, it's going to cost you the same resources, probably, or maybe. It, it, it does, it's just, it's an average value.
piece of public that they need to be donated to five departments. Absolutely. If they want, if they want the protection, they need to help them out so they understand that we don't fund them. We wow. to make donations, charitable contributions to them. So that's that's why I wanted to say that. But there, there is some consideration for that. I understand a little bit of that. I don't fully agree with that, but you got to start somewhere. But something I got to think about. Absolutely. I'd be happy to have a talk with you any time we can figure this out. <clears throat> These places in the county that we're having subdivisions built, can we not, this is an attorney question, can we not suggest to those people or is there a way that we can make them earmark portions of that land for future development of fire stations or don't lay it. I mean, it's, I, mean I, I like the idea, but it's happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, this will lead us right into the problem that we currently have. One is you've got to either do a property tax levied by a fire tax district or situs-based revenues from the unincorporated areas of the county or revenues that have already been shared with municipalities. And I think we've got a little problem here because we've got municipalities that are also being taxed at the county rate, so the question then becomes, is their money being used to fund the volunteer fire department? Well, tell me if I'm right or wrong with this. If it were to go to a referendum about a fire tax district, is it not true that the most populated area, say Hendersonville, would be the ones to have to vote on? They already have a fire department. Right, but they, it's, it's still their, their money going to fund these folks. That's now, the problem. It shouldn't be. But it is. That's why I'm saying there's something that I remember back when we talked about this years ago that the most populated area in the county would have to vote to allow us to put that uh, fire tax in the rural areas. I don't I may be completely off. The reason I don't think it could be that simple is because of the other municipalities. You're stripping away their rights to fund their own departments, and you could have a municipality issue then. Look, I, I want to get y'all money. I do. I, I've been in the fire service my whole entire adult life. I was started out on the volunteer ambulance service. I mean, it was a bad when I was on the volunteer ambulance service. My daughter was six months old, and I had to put her in a car seat, put her in the captain's chair in the back, and run call. I did that. So did he. And uh, now I've got a penitentiary. <laughs> She's probably seen more than a lot of people have ever seen at this table before in her young life. But, in saying all this, I want to help these folks. But, and I realize where our hands are tied. Legally, but can we legally uh, form an ad hoc committee to search this? And, I mean, can we do that, Mr. Seven? Let us never forget that it doesn't matter if you live in a million dollar home or a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, your life or your family's life. It's all about it's life saving. It's not profit. It's life saving. Right. It's and, and I don't want us to get worried about property tax or what our properties were because my home burns and I'm okay or mom and dad's house burns down or Lord forbid my school burns to the ground. As long as my kids aren't in there, I don't care if it costs $10 million. Let me say this and I'll shut up. Well, <laughs> I promise. We had one commissioner here on the county commission two years ago that said that he didn't want the fire department to come putting his house out. It wasn't very long ago. No, it was. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he said, let it burn down. He said, that's what pay insurance for. Right. Well, you know, he probably think different than that if it was his child or something trapped in that house or something. Other. So, anyway, like I say, it's down to life safety. It's not property value. It's not. Replacement value, I almost all about getting there to help folks in time of need. That's yeah. what it's about. So, can I address real quick? Just, I've got commissioners that have been waiting, so. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. Yes, um, the number that you gave us is a kind of 
small part on the floor. It's a seven hundred dollars on an eight hundred and seventy three challenge. That's something that you are it's in your mind that is a small part for a few years. Uh, what that is right there, that is the number we figured out for the 2018 values. Uh, I think that's when that was made. And so uh, right now the property values in this home are going to be much higher from 2018 to 2024. Uh, I'm actually working with the tax assessor to get those numbers right now to get them up to date. But that is uh, much improved. What we have now, the 450 to 780. I take it in a heartbeat. Uh, I'd like to be somewhere in that ballpark. So again, if you put if you put four fifty in there, you put a million dollars in that column. We can make it work as long as it is uh, uh, make it fit that formula. Well, I'd like to make a comment. Absolutely. Um, I think that we've blown through a lot of money for counseling, a lot, and seven hundred eighty-four thousand dollars is a lot of money. But considering all the money that we've blown through. Right. Go ahead. I'm just trying to. I'm sorry. All the money that the county goes to on a lot of different things. I mean, and some people will disagree with me. I mean, people disagree with me. People call me names and people call me stuff on Facebook. I don't care. But I'm just saying that in the scheme of things, in the whole picture, and you're looking at this dollar amount for your volunteer fire department take care of the people out there because a fire tax is going to be multiple times for that. And to give you that kind of funding perhaps is a lot lesser, the lesser road uh, of resistance than it is to do a fire tax. I'm just one person, but I do think that in the scheme of things and the way things are going and the tragedies we have, based on what we spend in the county for other things, I don't see that as a big problem. Thank you. So, Craig, how did they come up with this number? Where's the, I see the 350, $350 million mm -hmm. property taxes, square mile. Where's where's the magic? Never mind. That's it, right it, it is total right here. Now, you use 40 if you combine two and three columns, seven, five, and six columns, and then the total is there. Right. So now, listen, here's where the, the beef is going to be part of it. Absolutely. If we say, yeah, this is a great idea, and this is what we want to do, and this is how we want to give you guys your money, because I know it's coming, <laughs> are all fire chiefs in agreement with this, or is it going to be a squabble that, at finance and everybody lined up out the door? I have been kind of nominated to talk to y'all on behalf of all the fire chiefs. Okay. We've all made agreement that we're happy with this. Uh, I know uh, we've all sat in a circle together in a park and decided that this would be something we want to pursue. Um, I know a lot of guys filled out their nonprofit requests at the beginning of the month because it was due. True. And we have amounts all the way from the normal 24000 to 50000 per station uh, just because we all need to increase. But if you were to come to us and say, we're going to change and do this right here at whatever valuation, we would be absolutely happy about that. Yeah, question. Which one? So I'm interested in getting these ISOs down and getting more money, uh, getting our interest rates down and that's more money back into our community. Absolutely. But I don't like just talking about it. I like to see it. So what I'd like to know is how can you get these ISO rates down? I have went through the, the, the class and there, there are different things that we can do. And I do know that our, our planning committee has changed our uh, water hydrant. There was some provisions that removed fire hazards from our community that weren't helping our ISO. And I assume that's on TV tonight, perhaps. Some of them, yes, ma'am. And I would like to know, like, how many of those fire hydrants are missing that we would have put in without those planning a regulations? Lot. Oh, there's a lot. And how much would that cost us, and how much money could we return? I mean, this is a lot of calculations. So I'll, I'll take a point there. So back in the day, um, this county used to take contributions to the volunteer fire departments in lieu of fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm not slamming the volunteer fire department for that. Mm -hmm. So instead of putting a life safety device that's in the ground, let's give them money. Well, that's great, but when your surgeon goes to the operating room mm -hmm. and you don't have a scalpel, which would be the water to do the job with, what's the money doing any good for when they ain't got a fire hydrant to turn on and get the water? 
So anyway, I think our county's done a disservice for a while. Uh, so without beating this dead horse any more than we can, I think we all understand ISO rating. We all understand there's a need to be. Go ahead, Commissioner Boyd. Can we get numbers? Absolutely. What kind of numbers? How many fire hydrants do we not put in? So here's, here's the issue with that. What do we want to do? A plan? Like, what do we want to do? Well, and I, and I, I like your, your train of thought there. So the issue with numbers <laughs> is there's all kinds of water service providers throughout the county. So the numbers would have to come from the city of Galton, Cascade Springs, Westmoreland, city of Portland, city of White House, or White House Utilities, not city of White House, they don't like that. Uh, White House Utilities, and it would take the city of Hendersonville, and it would take all of those to combine uh, what they believe is an actual fire item there. Now, I don't know about actual numbers, and I don't even know how you can see it. But there may be a way, and I hate to throw him under the bus because he's not even here. Uh, Director Guthrie may be able to print a map, may be able to, to show where the fire hydrants are at if they're marked in the gas. You're probably going to have to get those from the water districts. Yeah, they, they are available. They're all GIS. And that's going to that'll take you along. And, and you're looking at having to put them every 400 to 500. Yeah, so. That we missed out. So, so what's cheaper, the pump truck or the fire hydrant? Well, pump truck ain't no good if you ain't got fire hydrant. Yeah, right. If you ain't got water line, it's a lot of money. Um, well, so you can't put a fire hydrant on the line. I would be, if I may, I would be in favor of more money if I could see the, a true plan of how the ISO ratings could go down. So you're giving money is going to help your ISO rating. Yeah. Well, I want to know what they're going to do with it. To, to bring my ISO rating down, like, are we going to get more fire hydrants? We're going to get this. We're going to get so, that. And, and you know, I don't want that verbal. If you could just bring it to me. But, let me, and let then me, show me how me much money I'm going to So the problem is that these guys don't put in fire hydrants. Uh, they just try to use them. And half the time, they don't even work. Uh, Fort Holland fought a fire last year, and it was, how much hose ran on? And the fire hydrant was like 6,000 feet from here to that was the fire hydrant. But it don't work in that city or White House utility. So I don't think it's fair yeah. to ask them yeah. what and they're going to do with. Sure, they can say we're going to buy trucks or hoses or spray nozzles or CBAs or whatever. Down, if they need water trucks to bring this down, then we can see uh, an increase in our economy. That would be great. So here's, here's what I would say. Is that idea to be attached at the budget level? At this point, all we need to do is say, yep, go to budget. And then at budget, they attach what the scope is of the money and what they want to look at. Does that make sense? Commissioner Jeff, I'm just a little confused about something. I may be not catching what you're saying, but you just said the previous commission was giving money towards the problem as opposed to fixing the problem. Is that the same thing? Is, no, is what, what they was doing. They was taking money in lieu of requiring contractors to put fire hydrant in. So, she's going down the road of looking at fire hydrants, but well, you're saying push the money towards fixing the problem. Yeah, well, I mean, because they can't do anything with the we, fire. They can't hydrant. put in a fire hydrant. That's done by the utility district. I understand that, but are we doing the same thing the previous commission by saying what you're saying? No, we're telling them about fire trucks and fire hoses things they need to fight fires with. And then on the planning side, whenever that comes around, we're, we're going to start institutions of the fire hydrants, the fire hoses, the 20-foot streets, the But it, to me, that's water. like what are saying, do what they're doing, but let's have a better plan than we're going to Go ahead and approve this. Like, send the money request up to budget to be tankers and things like that, like the previous commission has done, but also that's not what the previous commission did. You said they gave them money. I no, they, they took, did something with it. When, they, when, a, when a builder went out to subdivide a subdivision and there was no six inch water main coming down said road, they can make a contribution of $3,000 to that fire department of that area instead of running 
with a six inch water line and putting a hydrant there. So we yeah. So we are by far going the other way to get ISO ratings down. So hey, let's get your truck. Yeah. Not not for things like fire stuff like trucks and things like that. Right. Now follow. I didn't yeah. realize what you were going to do. Yeah. Twitch your voice. I'm sorry to have so many questions. There's just right. a, a lot of information here. It is. Um, and, I, and I appreciate you talking about the ISO. I, I'd still like to see, like, the components. And I, I, I don't, I've had a couple, a, a couple of hours of ISO talk, mm -hmm. and I still don't understand all the components that come into it. I know that there are people that can come in, and they, they have state experts on ISO, but I would still, before I would recommend going forward, I'd like to look at the ISO and all the elements that go into it and how that could help us. In our economy, and, the and, then, and then we also have this contract that's on here, and I don't understand all the contracts. I haven't had time to understand it. And when I get, there's a lot of it that I, I would like to read more. But like under county payment, I don't understand this part here about the county certified this payment is consistent entirely. I don't even I don't know what this means. I would so look that up to the lawyer honestly on that one. So. Yeah. I, I don't. You give me two I don't minutes, understand. I can explain and answer a lot of your questions. I would just like more time to look at the contract. I can't. I don't understand all the things. You want me to clear up what that means? Could you, sir? That is saying that the funds they receive have to be outside of the municipality. It's got to be generated outside in the county. Um, so, like I was saying, it has to be a sales tax. It would have to be unique to the county. It can't be a, a burden placed on the municipalities. So when I, I live in the city of Gallatin, I pay Gallatin taxes and I pay county taxes. You can't take my taxes from my... How does I that... I can take it and give it to your city. To answer your question. This formula was started in 1997. Robertson County happened to have their own fire department. Talk about ISO rating, they had an ISO of six inside Springfield. They only had one fire station. The state come in and ruled that uh, it was unfair taxation because only people within five miles of the city of Springfield was able to get their ISO rating of six. To be a countywide fire department, you have to have the same ISO rating uh, throughout the whole department. So they shut down the box of the paid fire department at the time, the state come in, uh, recommended using this formula and uh, for the other fire departments. And the reason why the property values uh, are in there is because uh, it gives an incentive to the fire department. When we've got a new 500 house subdivision, I know that never happens, you know, where if it comes in your area, a couple years down the road, you're going to get a funding increase because of that subdivision is coming. So that's the reason why the property uh, improvements are actually in there. Today, since 1997, actually 10 years later, most of the fire departments in Robertson County have dropped theirs to a four or five or a six ISO rate. Usually after underneath a seven to a five residential uh, homeowners premium stay the same. Go to four, three, and two, and one, it affects more commercial buildings. But, uh, your insurance premium, after you drop it to a five or below, it's not going to get any cheaper for homeowners. So, our goal is to make sure all our departments inside of Sumner County has a minimum of ISO rating five. And that gives them an incentive if you tie it in to the point.
Cheatham County, they're kind of unusual. But the difference is the county also pays the city for fire protection. So they also pay them. That's how they get the fire with this. I think that we need, I need more time to understand how that would work. Well, no, I mean, y'all want to roll in the morning? Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow. I'll like make a motion. Though. There's a lot. I'll second. Thank you. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, business is laying their own business here. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'll call the roll. Thank you. 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 Th
probably get more right on them. Um, but I can tell you that they quickly become outdated if they're more than a couple years old. And uh, just as we heard in some citizen comments earlier, um, we have done pay studies two or three times. And every time what has come out of that is we want to pay the worker bees. All right, so what that's created is a big compression. If we give another raise to the worker bees, uh, if you will, our agencies and paramedics, without continuing to give our administration or uh, the field personnel will truly be making more than the leaders in the department have been here for years. Well, if I, are we discussing? Uh, I didn't know if we opened up for open discussion. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Um, can we get a look at those numbers? I mean, with the Sheriff's Department, we did look at the numbers Absolutely. individually. And do you have a number for your administrative cost compared to your non-administrative cost? Yeah, um, I mean, we could look at salary worksheets and can get that fairly easily if that's what you want to do. I did you not bring all part now. Uh, the cost I do not have a range, uh, the difference in this. I did not bring that to this committee as I felt like uh, just a recommendation was needed out of here. And if it moves forward, then you know we'll make sure to get all the numbers needed uh, to bring that to the budget committee. So I, I did a lot of work on the sheriff's numbers. Uh, I wasn't so comfortable. I mean, after. A if they, if they would forgive me, after everything I put you Pratt out through, mm -hmm. I would not give you a, a yes, go ahead, that easy. And knowing that I sat with him for probably at least, we probably sat together for over 40 hours mm -hmm. discussing it before we ever said yes. So I, I'll be voting no because I haven't had a chance to even look at it and come up with anything. Um. Proper place for such a study to stay within this committee, or would it be in budget to have like a page study or something like that? So again, I, I want to, I want as the chair, I want to take just a minute and, and stress: this is just the idea. We're just the the baby phase. So, so saying that the movie, the budget. That's that's what we're trying to say. That's what I think this idea of this committee so is. Do I need to make a motion that we send this to the budget? For budget to do the pay study. Yes. That we yes. recommend it, and that's what we're thinking. That's that's my motion. That's exactly. got a motion in a second. All right. So now we've got a motion on the floor for the pay study to go to budget, and for budget to see what's needed for the pay study for EMS. That's where we're at. That's all this committee does. Take the idea and say, yep, here. Now you see what's with it. You can. Sorry. Right. So we got a motion in a second. Anybody else got any questions, comments, concerns? Yes, and it was a little bit different because at that point it wasn't a new appropriation because we used to 
lifted out of a miracle fund that came from the state. So it was a bit different. Um, we need miracles to cover a lot of this stuff. So I would say maybe it would be a good idea to put it in budget so that we can go ahead and you know, I, I don't mind. I like to talk about issues and questions, but when, when I get disrespected when I'm speaking and by other people here, I, I really have an issue with that. I respect everybody's comments on the table, but I think we need to stop to undermine conversation. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I'm just going to talk about it. Thank you. I'll shut up. I don't have a problem. My only hesitancy was if this committee needed to do anything to gather more information to send with this to study. And so I was asking Commissioner Boyd if there's anything that she would like to request or anybody else who thinks it needs to travel along with this to get the budget. If they could ask the same question, this would only give it an extra week worth of time to prepare. And so I'm throwing that out there. If nobody speaks up, then I'm ready to send it on to budget. But it's Chief, can you get off numbers so that they will be available whenever it goes to budget? Hey, yes, sir. I've uh, gotten everything I can from the counties that, are, that you have here. Some of it did have to come from social media, reached out to them. Not every county is this transparent and, and shares everything the same direction or the same way. Um, but I do have a, a good database ready to go uh, to budget committee. To try to get as much information as you possibly can. Yes, sir. When it arrives at budget. Lee, was there an issue of should this pass? And the police budget agenda is already printed and published. Is this, is this, was well, this on that? The budget will be Wednesday. Okay. So we can still get it. But I, the budget had its own threshold. Some of the stuff had to be on Thursday. Budget came out today. Right. So I mean, for it to move on, I won't actually. I don't think the budget, I mean, the uh, agenda has been posted. Not to be that, that's where I'm referencing. But I do know they've got certain other hurdles that have to be jumped through right. just to get onto their meeting. Okay. Commissioner Harris. Two lines. Commissioner Boyd. Two lines. Commissioner Harris. Two lines. 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 Towards the employee portion of your retirement. And a lot of the other places, well, most of the other places that we looked at during the sheriff's review did not. So we are paying into retirement 5%. So I know that that's one of the things when you go to hire someone, they don't take that into account. When you get a new employee, you start at the bottom, and they don't realize what we're paying into that retirement plan. So one of the things that we asked them, and I'm asking you now, do you want us to start moving that into the pay? into your hourly hours, hourly pay employed from the retirement because we're, we're paying more for our employees. So it, it's, a, it's a, when we went and asked, it's going to have to be a county-wide decision. If we're having trouble attracting employees, we can pay them more if we stop paying their retirement because the Robertson County is not putting in that 5% for the retirement. So we are. And they are able to pay higher starting wages. So that's a question that I'm going to ask in budget again. If you could determine if that's something you'd be interested in pursuing. I wouldn't be interested in reducing any benefits. Uh, we would just adjust the pay to whatever we think it needs to be. And then talk with the other um, departments. I know um, Chief Craddock understands, and he was interested in that in order to get more employees in and become more competitive in the market. This is more apples to apples when we fill out that. We're hiring at $22 an hour as opposed to $20 an hour. And it's just a shifting in where we're at. So we're, we're, it's, it's a question that we're going to discuss. If that's something I can, I can try to be prepared to see what other counties are doing uh, with their EMS departments, if there's any difference between the sheriff's office and, and other general employees. Because we can help you out by doing that. Mr. Chairman, the fact that this was just a pay study request would not be okay to add to the agenda without the link of public notice because it's not something that can be done on that line. Does that help anything? I, I think we've got plenty of time. 
that he said it was Wednesday. So I, think I apologize I, if I could clarify. I, I was thinking that was one of mine. David posts that agenda, so I, I believe it is actually. Uh, okay. So that, that, that was about, that was me. My yeah. stuff that I generate usually doesn't get posted until Wednesday. That was the confusion. So it's a